My name is Liz. I am 19. This is my son, Jonathan. I actually was pregnant when I graduated. And I had John the following January. I had health care actually my whole life until recently through my mom. Anytime I was sick, it would have to be, are you really sick? Do we really have to go in because of the co-pays, the prescription costs? It would be a lot cheaper to just go to our primary care physician than to go to the hospital, where it could be 75 to $95. When I first started Medicaid, I was a minor. I was 17. I actually had to submit one piece of paper. It just gave me a number, and I was done. I was transferred off of what you call straight Medicaid. We ended up choosing Health Plan of Michigan. It got just ridiculous. If it weren't for my family and it weren't for our friends, I wouldn't have any care. I would, I would always make sure my son had something, but I wouldn't see anybody. After so many years of working in this dental laboratory, he was laid off for a year. After his unemployment benefits ran out, he made a choice. Um, whether it was his family or his health, he found out that he had high blood pressure. He wasn't able to obtain COBRA, and he stopped taking his high blood medications. And then after that, he went out and got a job. And two days after being on this new job is when he had a massive stroke. Or he wasn't able to talk. He... Um, he, it looked like his eyes were actually rolling in the back of his head. They told me he would probably never speak again or be able to walk or different things. And the doctors told me if he would have just been able to take his medication, that that probably wouldn't occur. Mm -hmm. You know, with a person having a massive stroke, he couldn't sit. He was on a feeding tube. Um, I didn't want him to just be put through the system just because he was ill. I don't think because a person is ill that they should just be put through the system if they if a person have worked all of their life. I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Michigan. I run an outpatient uh, psychotherapy practice in Royal Oak, Michigan. And we have uh, 10 staff, uh, 10 clinical staff, social workers and psychologists, and two uh, office staff. The employees take care of it on their own. We, there's no way we could afford to um, provide health care coverage to our employees. It's just our margins are too low. I'd like to be able to offer it. I mean, I wish, I wish we could. Um, but the, the realities of the marketplace today are, you know, with the cost of running a business um, and paying taxes and doing all the other things you have to do. I just, it's just not an option. Uh, I was working as the clinical director of a outpatient mental health and substance abuse facility through the Detroit Medical Center. And we tried to keep that coverage when we went and started our own business, but the premiums were just so outrageous that we couldn't afford it. Um, we then tried to get a policy through the National Association of Self-Employed, which um, gave us a great rate for the first year, and then it went up about 40%. So I was a little dismayed and felt misled that they were promoting this as a inexpensive alternative, and uh, in fact, it wasn't. My wife had a procedure where I, I asked for a specific, uh, it, was, it was a simple procedure, and I said, if nothing goes wrong and there's no um, complications, what will it cost? And after talking to three levels of managers, I finally got to an agree to a price. And then I said, could you put that in writing? No, we can't do that. So I have to talk to two more people, and they put it in writing. Okay. So it was a routine thing, and everything was the way it was supposed to go. And then we get a bill for three times the amount on my little piece of paper. So what are you supposed to think? Fortunately, I had my little piece of paper, because if I didn't, I would have had nothing to like to stand on. In terms of the Conyers bills, I understand it. Um, I think it would address the needs of, you know, of both employees and employers in the sense of um, having coverage that was, you know, guaranteed to people universally. The burden would be removed from the employers to have to come up with extra money. Um, I think as a, as a, you know, as a caring democratic society that that we say we are, I think that's something that should be provided for all the citizens. So. 
I think the Conyers bill would help. It's just what should happen. It's what we're entitled to. It's just something that should have already been written into the Constitution. It is a responsibility of the government to take care of its people. People shouldn't have to worry about, elderly people shouldn't have to worry about, should I eat this week? I think that as a nation, we need to stop acting like it's a problem, which it is, but we need to come down to some solutions, some real solutions to the problems. I can only imagine in a single payer system where when things are more clear, um, there wouldn't be this need for overbooking because a lot of the inefficiencies in the system have to do with the you know the insurance nightmare and and all of the complications where many people really don't know what they're going to be paid on the provider level until they actually send the claim out and many patients don't know what they're going to have to pay until after it comes back. You would be able to choose any licensed doctor who's working within that system. You would have the freedom to choose whoever you want. Whereas compared to now, I've had a pediatrician almost my whole life here in Michigan. And when my mom's health plan changed to Blue Cross Network, I had to get somebody I had no idea who they were. I would be more than willing to pay more in taxes to feel that everybody was covered. What are we doing if, if we've created an affluent society where, where so many thousands and millions of people aren't, aren't being taken care of, and I think that's a tragedy. You may be paying more taxes for different programs. I, I feel that what the Conyers bill would be ensuring is more voice over where taxes are going. We're still paying out of pocket anyway, so wouldn't it be simpler to raise taxes and have adequate health care for people rather than not have adequate health care and still be paying anyway. We all suffer the same plight. Without health insurance, we all suffer the same fate. Anybody can get sick.